I'm still pretty scared from last night, and I kind of need to talk about it with people who may understand. Very few experiences have left me as shaken as this. So before anything, I'm going to confirm what we do have at least one ghost in our house. It's a woman, and several neighbours have confirmed seeing her. She's the grandma of mom's boyfriend, and he's claimed to have felt her as well. Me and my mom have also seen a shadow go from a room to the bathroom, and vice versa. That all the way, let's begin. It was around 4am, and I had just finished taking a shower. Everyone's asleep. My family, the neighbours, everyone. My neighbourhood sleeps like a log. I enter my room and head towards my bed, but then I hear a woman's laugh. It felt as if she was in front of me and sitting on my bed. I thought to myself, okay, no biggie. Maybe she's amused at something. I know she's not inherently harmful. Just overprotective of my mom's boyfriend. So I turned on the bedroom lights and laid down, trying to sleep and act like it didn't happen. Unfortunately, an hour passes and I haven't fallen asleep. Mom's boyfriend wakes up and turns on the TV. After another bit of sleeping, I go out and start talking to him about the laugh. He tells me to just pray and it should be over. But then I mention how that hasn't helped much before and describe my experiences with similar stuff as a kid. There was a flicker of a light in the balcony. That light has been dead for years. It never turns on. A part of me is afraid and points it out, but I keep talking about my experiences. The light flickers again, and this time I'm a bit more scared. But I want to keep talking to mom's boyfriend, so he understands why praying isn't much of a comfort to me. And then, the light flickered. A third time after a bit. And immediately, I told him and decided to leave my room. My body had chills all over, and all I could feel was fear and dread. There was nothing else. Just sleepiness and fear. 30 minutes had passed and the chills still hadn't left my body. I had to sleep with the lights on because I was too freaked out to try and sleep with them off. Around 12 years ago, I had a strange occurrence happen to me and it's bothered me ever since. Sometime around 2009, I started having these weird dreams that involved a white owl. I don't remember many details of the dreams, except a white owl would appear, and I'd wake up. These dreams were recurring, having them about twice a month for a little over a year. Flash forward to 2011. It had been months since the dreams, and they'd been mostly forgotten. It was winter break. My best friend and I were taking a trip from our small town on the Texas Gulf Coast to Austin, and we decided to take country roads to avoid cops, so we could get our smoke on along the way. We were on about a 15 mile stretch of road called FM 1301, which is dark and covered in wooded areas beside a house here and there. But the moon had to have been full because it was providing ample light. We were driving, shooting the breeze, when I looked over at my friend to say something and out of the window, I saw it. I froze and lost the color in my face when my friend looked out the window to see what it was. A white owl flying side by side with us and he was like, oh, that's cool. When all of a sudden it sped up and smashed straight into the passenger side mirror, shattering the glass and knocking the mirror down. It was a very strange happening and even stranger was the fact that white owls are a northern bird and very rarely seen in the south. I don't know. It still bothers me to this day. It started at a coffee shop. I was drinking a decaf iced Americano at a table near a pool table and writing. I imagined the cue ball bouncing off the table and hitting me. About 30 minutes later, it bounced off the table and hit my foot. A little weird, but not too unexpected. I was next to a pool table after all. Not such a weird thing to imagine and then happened. A while later, someone came in. I looked up and thought it was an acquaintance named Bob. I work at a grad school library and Bob was a student there. But I looked again and it wasn't Bob. It was somebody else. No big deal. Just a case of mistaken identity. I left soon after to go have dinner at a nearby burger joint. And 30 minutes after I thought I'd seen Bob, who walked into the burger joint? 
It was Bob. Okay. A little weirder. The next morning, while at work, it was a slow day. The system went down for a short while, and when it came back up, I tested it by typing in a barcode number. Five digits from the phone number from an old local pizza joint jingle from my youth. About 30 minutes later, a patron came in to check out a movie. And I knew it. I knew what the barcode would be. So I flipped the disc over and checked. It was the same five digit number. I wasn't even really surprised. And that was the last of it. Nothing quite like that has happened to me before or since. Maybe just a string of coincidences, but all three in a short time and all specific and small are weird. The part that freaks me out the most is that third premonition. It wasn't a random set of numbers, so it couldn't just be that I saw the future, but unless this was a coincidence, somehow influenced it. I think somehow that decaf iced Americano had something to do with it. I seriously don't believe in ghosts, but I can't explain this one. I work in a small mall with many expensive clothes. It's a mall full of brand new clothes. I myself work at Guess, and yesterday we took inventory. This is when we count every single product that we have. And since we can only do it when no one is in our store, we work till 10 p.m. The clothing hour for our store is normally 6 p.m. The mall has lots of security, even at night. In the area where the mall is, there are many homeless and criminal people, and to prevent them from stealing really expensive stuff, there's always security. But yesterday at 8 p.m., two hours after clothing hours, a homeless man knocked on the glass. It wasn't any homeless person. He was really famous in my city because he always drives around with a shopping cart and is really nice to other people. I always used to buy him food before I started working. So me and my co-worker opened the door and asked him how we got inside. He answered that he got here through the front door and that he wanted to see me. He gave both of us a flower and went away. I just realized that we were acting really normal. He was always a little drunk, but not yesterday. It was really cute, and I thought since the security must know him too, they just let him in. And I didn't really think about it anymore. When we left, I asked why the security let him inside, and they told me that there was no one. You have to know that you can't really hide in there, especially not with a shopping cart. Everything is really small, and all the different shops have alarms. So I was freaking out. They were looking inside to make sure no one was there and came back and told me there wasn't anyone and that must have been my imagination. We showed them the flowers, but they didn't really care much. Probably thought we wanted to scare them. So my co-worker drove me home and today he sent me something. I was really shocked when we saw it. He sent me a photo from our city news and yesterday at 3pm, a bunch of people beat them to death. They're searching for the people and for people who saw it. It's really messed up since it was in the city and I'm sure there were many people who could have helped or called the police. And I gave him food one hour before he died. This is really creepy and sad. This experience happened to me five or so years ago. Throughout my life, I've always had issues with sleep, insomnia, nightmares, and terrible sleep paralysis. All of which would place a negative attachment to my bed. And so I would often sleep in the living room on a separate mattress. Like many nights prior during my high school days, I would stay up way too late and struggle to fall asleep. This night was no different, until I'd feel myself regain consciousness in a manner similar to how someone nudging you awake would feel. As someone who's experienced sleep paralysis many times, I've been able to sort of recognize it in the moments when it happens. This, however, felt different. I would soon feel my limp body begin to rise slowly in the air. I had really long hair at the time, and I vividly remember the weight of it dangling down towards my mattress. I was aware of what was happening and was completely petrified. My heart was beating at an astounding rate and the creepiest thing about this experience was, I felt this bone chilling cold and had this immense feeling of evil. That's the best way I can describe it. I felt this overwhelming sense of evilness. Whatever was causing me to levitate did not have good intentions. I remember thinking over and over again, let me go, let me go. After some time suspended in the air, 
I'd feel myself drop and hit my mattress. Immediately after that, I'd spring up and rush to turn on all the lights. It was about 3 or 4am and I was shaking like crazy. I didn't sleep that night and for a week after, I slept with the lights on. To this day, I have no idea what happened. The thought of it sends chills down my spine. So this happened a few years ago, but I still remember it vividly because it was the most shocking thing that ever happened to me. The potential paranormal stuff starts somewhere in the middle of my experience. Back then, I was a student living with my sister who was almost never home. I had an interest in lucid dreaming and read about it, but never managed to achieve it. One night, I had a dream that I was outside my workplace on a kid's bicycle. The atmosphere was orange black, very bleak. I was having fun chatting with friends. Suddenly, my body starts floating and I start flying. I thought to myself, wait, I know I'm asleep and tried not to get too excited so I don't wake up. I'm flying around like a happy stoned guy smiling and then I see in the long distance someone flying towards me. It was quite far, so it was just a black entity to me. I got closer, but the entity didn't come any clearer and I said hi. At that moment, I started falling. My body was vibrating and I gradually awoke up, feeling and hearing strong vibrations. I opened my eyes. I was laying on the side facing the wall with my room door behind me. Eyes wide open, I felt from the very first second of waking up that there was someone in the room. I cannot describe how sure I was. It was as if someone was standing in front of me, but there was no one there. Thoughts racing, what should I do? Somebody broke in. If I turn around, they could attack me. Would it be better to just pretend I'm sleeping? I wanted to cry and just stay there motionless. I was not dreaming. I could hear the neighbor coughing like every night. I could smell the ashtray just a meter away. I even pinched myself. After a few minutes that felt like eternity, I felt the sheet covering me being lifted on my backside. I felt I would die of shock, but not fear per se. I felt someone's weight lightly on my bed, and then the sheets, and then a very slight touch in my whole back body, like someone was cuddling me. And that was it. I waited a few more minutes and turned around. No one was there. My door was closed the whole time. My sister was not at home that night either. All I can say is I don't remember feeling fear for much, but I do when I remember it. This all began when I was approximately 12 and lasted until I moved out in my early 20s. The first time I ever saw the brown man, I was around 12, but I'm not entirely sure. I was lying on the living room floor watching TV. I believe it was the middle of the day in the summer. I just remember I was eating and watching TV. I wasn't sleeping. To my left is the hallway with a bathroom on the left side, an office in the middle and my bedroom on the right. It wasn't exactly out of the corner of my eye due to where I was laying, but that's the first time I saw him. He was tall, over six foot. He was brown, but you could still kind of see through him. He seemed to have a hat and coat on. He walked from the bedroom to the bathroom, never turning, looking straight ahead. My heart dropped. I wasn't sure what I saw, but it scared me. So I walked to the bathroom and stood against the wall. I turned to look in and saw nothing, even brave enough to check the shower curtain. I let it go and never said anything since I wasn't sure I actually saw anything. Since that incident, I saw him at least two more times through those years. Once, he walked from the bathroom to the bedroom, but the other was late at night during the summer. We had been working on the roof of the house and that night it was storming. I was playing video games on the computer in our computer room when I decided to look into the living room. And at that moment, lightning flashed and I saw his outline standing in the living room, looking towards my parents' bedroom. I didn't sleep for hours after that as I had never seen him there before. Throughout the years, I would feel a presence in my bedroom at night. It wasn't menacing, but it was heavy. It felt like someone was standing behind me, watching me. There were times I had my hair tugged and I felt it sit on the bed, 
thinking it was my cat, and I kicked my foot, but nothing was there. In my twenties, I brought it up with my parents and brother, and they've all seen or experienced something as well. I've been working on two Native American reservations for a year and a half now. On the current reservation, I've not had any memorable experiences with spirits or the paranormal, but last year, I had multiple at the other. The first started when I was sleeping in the basement of the house I was in, due to having not enough rooms. I was laying on my bed trying to sleep, but was unable due to the too much light coming in. I was night shift. As I lay there, I heard a cardboard box with some of my belongings in it drag across the floor. I turned and looked in the direction the sound came from and didn't see anything. I got up and walked into the room. Nothing looked out of place, but I couldn't remember if that's where I left it. So I went back to bed and when I laid down, I heard footsteps above me, but I knew that no one else was home. I just ignored it and eventually fell asleep. Later, I found out other people heard footsteps in that house and another person saw a shadow person later in the basement. When I came back a month later, I was in a different home. After about two weeks, I was laying in bed on my phone when I heard a very loud knock on my bedside table right behind me. I turned to look but saw nothing. A friend attempted to replicate it on the window and door and nothing sounded the same other than the table. Less than a week from then, I rolled from one side of the bed to the other and as I rolled, I saw an approximately three foot tall all black shadow run across the foot of the bed. I asked the locals if they knew anything like that and was told about Wee Weller. They're little people that play pranks. Never had another experience in that home after seeing it. Where I was working, there were many stories of different spirits in different areas of the facility. Late at night, walking around, I always felt I was being watched. One night, I was sitting in my chair when in the corner of my eye, I saw a tall, opaque shadow walk into the room and disappear into the shadow of a door. I let it go, as the other person in the room didn't see anything, but then they had to leave, making me the only person in the room. As I look up, I see movement in the blinds, similar to a faint shadow of a tallish man sitting down, wearing a hat. I freaked out and left until she came back. I asked other employees, and they say that the corner used to have their table and chair, and that they've seen that man come in many times and sit there. When I was about five or six, I was brought into a hospital due to a serious infection in a large cut on my knee. Since I wasn't able to walk without taking a 30 minute break every 10 minutes, I was mostly in the room I was given. Back then, I didn't really have a good relationship with my sister, so she barely stayed in my room. This was eventually where the problem started. On about my third night of my hospitalized stay, when I started experiencing extreme paranoia, every time I was the only one in the room. For some reason, I always thought someone was just staring at me from the bathroom door frame. It was the sixth night that confirmed my fears. My sister had been watching me when my mom was at work for a few hours. Since it was her fault I even got the infection, I didn't talk to her and just went to sleep. When I woke up, the TV was off. The only light were the buttons near my bed and on my bed and my sister was gone. I couldn't really see in the dark, but I could see a silhouette in the doorway of the bathroom. I knew it wasn't sleep paralysis because I could move just fine. So being prone to freezing up when scared I didn't move. The silhouette was shaped in the form of a tall figure and I could barely make out anything else. For what felt like hours, that thing just stood there and after a while, I tried to ignore it and go back to sleep, but I could just feel it staring at me. I tried everything, talking to it, squeezing my eyes shut, calling for one of the nurses or even my sister and much more. I ended up having to spend the whole night with it staring at me, not being able to sleep or anything. When it was finally moving, I tried to tell everyone about it and nobody believed me, saying it was just a kid's imagination. Even years later, I think about it from time to time 
and get scared over shadows shaped like what I saw years ago. My parents bought this building in a residential area in a rural town in southeastern Louisiana in late 2018. They run a medical billing company and were looking for a cheap office space to account for the sudden growth they were experiencing. Despite this being a residential property, the layout is pretty weird. There are windows and glass doors completely lining two of the exterior walls, and the other two walls are wooden siding. The interior consists of two main rooms. The first room has a large open space, a full kitchen with a large island, and a small 6x10 laundry room. The second room is completely open and has two doors that lead to a small closet and bath. The two main rooms are separated by an eight foot wall covered in large glass window panes. And the ceiling reaches a max height of about 16 feet as it is vaulted. It's on about two acres of land with woods along the back of the property. I'll also add that the building has a metal roof that will oven warp when it heats or cools, resulting in a single loud popping sound. Now my parents aren't exactly skeptics, but they don't go looking for this type of stuff either. One evening, shortly after closing on the property, my father was at the building working on some minor repairs and cleaning up the place. I don't know exactly when it took place, as he didn't tell me until much after, but he heard distinct footsteps along the wall that separated the two main rooms. Sometime after this experience, his good friend was here alone to do some more work on the interior building and claims to have heard footsteps on the roof. The friend was so sure of what he heard that he grabbed a ladder and went up to make sure no one was there. Of course, finding nothing. After hearing of this, my dad and one of his buddies from church decided to pray over the building and he says he hasn't had any experiences like this since. I consider myself to be sensitive to the paranormal. I work here in this building full time and I occasionally feel the uneasiness you might associate with a presence being nearby, but I was only really here during work hours. Quick but relevant detail, I came out as non-binary in September 2020 and chose the first name Zephyr. I used Honey as a placeholder middle name before it changed to Dukra. Fast forward to the end of 2021. We have a COVID scare in the office and all but four employees switched to working remotely, leaving my parents, my sister and I coming into the office. My parents take this opportunity to sell their house and convert one of the rooms into a living and bedroom. Around the same time, my sister purchased a mobile home to put on the front of the property and I'm renting a room from her. Now living here, I've been experiencing random episodes of paranoia, surges of anxiety and pretty bad insomnia. I do have generalized anxiety disorder, but I've gotten pretty good at coping and recognizing triggers. These episodes don't feel the same. They don't feel like my own emotions. I'm a smoker and I'll often sit on the steps of the mobile home for a late night cigarette. More and more often, I sense a presence either approaching me from the right side or sitting by a tree on my left side, always the same tree. And then on comes the paranoia. One night, I actually took note that I didn't feel any type of presence or paranoia or anxiety. As I stood to go inside, I had a sort of unconscious thought. Oh, there she is. Immediately followed by my conscious brain saying, what the fuck? Who is she? There are several other minor experiences I've had. Items going missing and mysteriously returning right where they were left. A protection charm falling from my car's rear view mirror after hanging there securely for two years. For some reason, my dad brought up yesterday that the previous owner died of cancer here in the house. I found her name on white pages and looked up her obituary. She had a nephew named Vess and a niece who went by Honey. At this point, I'm thinking there's far too many coincidences. I shared all of this with my friend who practices witchcraft and she has a little more experience working with spirits and he's suggesting we hold a seance. He believes she may be stuck between worlds due to unfinished business. The working theory we have is that when my dad prayed for protection of the house, all he did was form a barrier over the threshold leaving her locked inside.
This was back in 2013. My grandmother passed away suddenly. My mother was down with them for about three hours from our home. I get a call that me and my father need to go to the hospital ASAP. So me and my dad load my truck up with clothes and I start driving. I was doing 100 plus miles an hour down a highway that's notorious for speed traps. And we passed many highway patrol vehicles, but none of them stopped us. We got to the hospital in about an hour and 15 minutes from the phone call. And she had passed as we were pulling into the parking lot. Well, that night, we went to my grandparents' house and all hell breaks loose in regards to weather. Tornado sirens going off, blinding rain so thick you can't see two inches in front of you, and extreme winds. This went on all night from the moment we got in the house till the next morning after everyone had awoken. Well, me, my dad, grandfather, uncles, and my mom were out on the porch drinking coffee, talking and planning the funeral. I looked across the field and saw the sun was starting to break. This is the first and only time I've seen a quadruple rainbow and a cardinal was sitting on the porch railing, not six inches from us at the same moment. And it even let us pet it. Now I should say, my grandmother was an awesome lady and very, very hard to anger. But when you angered her, you would have thought a bomb went off with how mad she would be. I'd only seen her in that mood twice in my life. So I believe the sudden storms that night were her tearing into someone for taking her away from her family suddenly. Then the rainbows and cardinal were her letting us know she was okay. Then in 2018, when my grandfather passed, my sister called us to look out the window and sent us a picture outside her window. Outside our window and her window at the same time, there were two cardinals not six inches away from us and they also let us pet them when we went outside. About 10 minutes later, we got a phone call about my grandfather passing away. I feel like this was them saying goodbye. Casting the stories are as follows. Mom and dad, my siblings are one seven-year-old brother, one five-year older sister, sister one, and one three-year older sister, sister two. The first story, I was about eight, so this would have been about 1995. I was in bed one morning during the summer around 9am. We had the old cheap pull-down blinds, the type you pull down to allow it to release and open. I was just laying there after waking up and listening to the radio when the blind randomly shot up violently. At first I thought the blind broke, but when my brother came in to see what had happened and what I did, I told him I didn't do anything. I was away from the window on the edge of my bed. My brother, after I said that, went ghostly white and pale and told me not to look out of my room. I turned around and in the window is this demonic looking face. Being eight, I wasn't able to recall the details on the face, but from what I remember and from what my brother has described years later, it looked like a mix of a zombie, a rotting goat and a devil. After seeing this, both of my sisters ran into the room to see what was going on and both started screaming as well because they saw it. My brother was trying to get all three of us out of the room while we were absolutely frozen in fear. The figure started running across the bed and tripped on the blankets and fell through the floor to the basement. I say tripped and through like that as it was what appeared to have happened to me. My sisters refused to talk about it to this day and my brother didn't see it. The basement of this house was always scared me. It was always dark no matter how many lights were on or if flashlights were used. About a month later, my sister too started screaming in the middle of the night and I'm talking a blood curdling scream. We all woke up from her screaming, but none of us could move, both of my parents included. My room was next to my parents so I could hear them screaming to my sister asking, what is going on? We can't move. My sister only continued screaming. The only person who does not wake up is my sister number one who's in the same room. She slept through the entire ordeal. I'm crying. I hear my parents and my brother trying to get up to the extent that they're shaking the bed to get out, but they cannot move. It's like we're all held down by something. After about 15 or 20 minutes of this, we all released about the same time. 
and all of us ran into the living room towards my sister's room. Then both of my sisters ran out of the room. Sister number two told us what happened. She awoke and saw someone floating over her with the face of a witch. Sister number one said she woke up and saw something go from above sister number two to the floor to the basement, but thought she was imagining things as she had just woken up, but heard all of the screaming and that's when all of us were able to get up and move. I live in a suburb. My father died two years ago at work and his ashes are in the same room as mine. I've gotten messages from him from dream visitations. One of the most common, familiar sensations or smells, pennies and dimes and electrical disturbances. Nobody else we know has died and we're the first owners of the house and we have no landlord. I'm young and younger people tend to notice paranormal activity more than adults. It's 2.30am and I'm the only person up. The room is dark, the crickets are loud with the summer fall mix and the air conditioning is silent. The only light is from my smoke alarm and computer motherboard, a faint orange flashing glow from the back. I'm lying in bed trying to sleep, but I have a heavy feeling on my shoulder like something is about to happen. I move my blanket around. I hear a faint whistling in the distance. The crickets go silent and I can now hear the blood moving around my ear. My bedroom is in the back of the house and the whistling is in the front. I hide under my blanket as the something gets closer, getting louder. I'm frightened by whatever this is and my brother, who is 16, stays asleep. The whistling continues to get closer until it's directly in front of my house. It stopped. I don't dare move a muscle, but then it continues to whistle while standing still, then continues across the sidewalk. Ever since this happened, it's happened almost every night with nobody up to hear. I've had my fair share of demonic activity all my life. I've been grabbed, seen black figures, had them pass through me, touch me, pull my feet, shake my bed, move things. I'm not new to this. I recently bought an older home from the 50s. You can usually feel when something is in the house. This one felt fine. First, I've recorded white mists in the front yard. Someone walking with heavy boots on the porch and in the home. Balls of light in various locations. I've heard feet with nails running on the wood floors. I've heard someone talking in my ear, scratching on the dresses by my head. My wife has also seen black figures over our newborn, so we covered all the mirrors. Now, our daughter says she's seeing things in the mirror in her room. A black figure in the mirror was moving around, so she looked at the floor and it moved to the floor in front of her. We've had the house blessed by a pastor. He seems good. He's even been to the Vatican. He left pictures of saints around the house that he blessed. After this one night, the front door slammed shut. I ran to check and it was open, so I closed it and put the locks on. That morning, when I got up at 3.30am, I noticed that the saints were missing. I looked for all the other ones and they were gone. I've tried to find out what I can about the house. No one's died here. There's no burial ground under it or anything. The only thing is a beetle painted on the wall in our daughter's room. It's an outline of a beetle with the head on top and the top legs pointed up. We painted over it twice and it keeps bleeding through all the paints. I thought it was a marker at first, but now I don't know what it is. Does the beetle have any significance of demonic or paranormal in any way? My partner passed away from a sudden massive heart attack on April 20th of this year. Life has been a total shit show since then, but I wanted to share the weirdness that happened in the day leading up to the event and see if anyone else has experienced something like it. Things started to get weird the evening before. He was in excellent spirits and we were hanging out with a friend, had been watching TV, but started sharing old RPG stories. 
He launched into a story about two of his characters in a long campaign he DM'd. And he was talking animatedly. I had this weird, quiet voice in my head tell me to really pay attention, to lock this scene in my mind. I studied everything about him while he spoke and gestured and smiled and laughed, and such a deep love. Later, I'd be thankful for this, because I'd be able to replace the visuals of finding his body with the scene whenever it bubbled up in my mind. But it was a strong compulsion that night, which hasn't happened before ever, and that weird, quiet voice would make another appearance the next day. Later, I'd mention this to our friend who was present, and she admits she too had a similar compulsion. And she's as skeptical of these things as they come. That night, I woke to a crash sound. I walked the house twice looking for the cause but found nothing. I checked on him once and saw his CPAP was running and started to go back to sleep, but felt this deep dread and decided to wake him up instead. I had never forcibly jostled him from sleep in the middle of the night, but I did it that night, with an apology. I just needed to make sure he was okay. He was, so we went back to sleep. The next morning, I felt sick as a dog. I felt so sick, I took my first ever COVID test, but I was sure something was really wrong. I felt completely dissociated, fuzzy-headed, and wholly out of step with time. Everything felt a beat behind. Everything felt deeply wrong in a way I'd not encountered before. He also felt a little off, he says, but mostly just tired. I took the morning off of work, but I had to finish a project and went into my office to finish it as he walked downstairs to eat his lunch. We locked eyes as he walked downstairs. I think about that moment a lot. It was the last time I'd see him alive. I went into my office to finish the project. Less than one hour later, I emerged and realised he hadn't come back upstairs yet. I see a pile of folded laundry he forgot to take downstairs and chuckle to myself. I call out for him as I'm walking down the stairs, cheerfully announcing I'd finished the piece. Then I found him. In that horrible moment, time slowed to an absolute crawl and I could feel the tracks of my thoughts almost separate. With a lower track insisting he had fallen asleep, but that weird quiet voice cut through sad and calm and said, ah, that's what it was. I knew it was referring to all of the recent strangeness. All of my symptoms disappeared in an instant. I felt time as a solid thing. This moment as an immovably heavy laden box that was inevitable and awful and pulled time around it out of step. It's gravity in this instant wrapping things around it. I could almost see this terrible wall between what was and what now was a wall I couldn't get past to ever reach him again. I started screaming at that point and things became a blur of 911 and neighbours and EMTs in my memory of the day. My question isn't just if anyone has had this sort of experience before, although I very much do want to hear if you have, but why? Why have all these little dread moments? What's the point of precognition that looks so clear in hindsight but does nothing to prevent it? All that, and I still didn't feel the moment he passed. He was cold when I reached him. He was alone when he passed, and I can't forgive myself for that, even if there was no way to know. All these little things that happened feel like thorns because they did nothing for him or for me. They feel like taunts. About 30 years ago, when I was six years old, a classmate of mine tragically died in a snowmobile accident. She and her father were travelling down a frozen river when they fell through. This happened on a weekend, and it wasn't until the following Monday that the whole class was told. I should note that I was never close with this girl. She was more of an acquaintance, but nevertheless, this event was one of the first deaths I had experienced, and it had always stuck with me. It's an eerie experience that happened before this event that I'll never forget. On the weekend of the tragic event... I remember being at home when at some point during the afternoon, I had this weird feeling that's hard to explain. I suddenly started thinking about my classmate, specifically worrying that something was wrong with her. It was very brief, and I never gave it any thought again until that following Monday at school when I learned of what had happened. What's even creepier is that my premonition occurred around the same time it was estimated that the accident happened. I've never experienced an ESP event of this magnitude since, 
and I'm still not sure what to make of it. The only thing close to this is the odd uncanny ability I have to predict certain episodes of TV shows that will air a few days before they do. But it's obviously nowhere near as eerie or serious as the original occurrence. I was never really close with this aunt. She wasn't technically my aunt. I don't know how it works, but she dated my mom's brother since I was around 10. She wasn't well her last few years. She had two kids with my uncle and took care of my two other cousins from a previous marriage. Anyways, so I never was close to her, which made this dream so bizarre. The night before the funeral, I had this very vivid dream of her. Now when she died, she was a very skinny woman. In this dream, however, she looked like how she did before her gastric bypass surgery. Kinda on the thicker side of you'd say. I was on a field with her and in the dream I knew she was dead. We spent a moment looking at one another and I asked her how she was doing. She said she was fine, which was a typical response from her. Then I looked around, the field and monarch butterflies were flying around the field. Then I woke up and immediately told my mom. Flash forward to the funeral. It was an open casket. I'm in the line waiting to view her and greet the family. There were poster boards they had made lining the walls and I started looking at all of them. I caught sight of one and immediately broke into tears. It must have been some kind of photo shoot she had done because she looked very posed in it. My mom saw and asked me what was wrong. I pointed at one of the photos and said, that's how she looked in my dream. And there were monarch butterflies all over this poster. I tried to compose myself before I saw the family and my mom immediately told me I needed to tell them, which I thought was completely inappropriate. It's one thing if I was closer with them, but I wasn't that close. That, and it just seemed inappropriate in front of the rest of the people there. That didn't stop my mother. She walked right up to her brother and told him. I don't think he's the one to really believe in ghosts or supernatural things, but after she told him, tears welled up in his eyes. He looked at me and said, those are her favourite pictures of herself. When my husband was hired to be a butler on the rambling estate, I was told to choose one of the two houses as the butler's house. The first house I looked at was really more practical for us. Smaller, with a fenced in garden, more privacy as we'd be further away from the main house and so on but I didn't get too excited about it. The second house was it for me the minute I walked in the door. At this point, let me say it was in disrepair and unoccupied for quite some time. But as I later realized, one aspect of this house that was a subtle form of haunting was to susceptible individuals like me. It seemed like a palace. I instantly became obsessively possessive about it. I of course picked this as our new home. We moved in, my husband who began his new job and I busily and happily began to transform the neglected old house into our little castle, or so I thought. It was a huge place with enormous rooms and a master bedroom the size of a ballroom. One of the first things that started to go awry were malfunctions that came out of nowhere. We had just had the chimneys cleaned, yet a chimney fire started for no good reason in the old Stanley cooker in the kitchen. Luckily, a workman spotted it, and it was put out with no real damage. One Sunday afternoon, we were out and I had the gnawing feeling to go back home. We did, and found the washing machine had turned itself on somehow and the door was wide open, pumping water into our kitchen. It took all day to clean up that mess. The feeling of being watched after sunset was overwhelming. My husband worked late hours and oftentimes I had to wait for him outside until he returned. I tried initially to convince myself it was imagination, but it wasn't. I saw a white mist outside our bedroom door slowly fall from the feet up into the shape of a woman and disappear before my eyes. We heard nightly whispers or what sounded like people fighting downstairs nearly every night. The singing lady was another. I saw my husband's doppelganger one night going to the bathroom as he slept in our bed. Not long after, he died of a heart attack. He was strong, but I believe the house had a bad influence on his health. After his death, 
I stayed on the estate for years, living in another house across the way. Butlers came and went. One hung himself, another, a big strong man, faded away and died in less than six months. Prior to my husband being butler, the man that held the position also lived in that house for a brief time. He was accused of murdering his brother for profit on the estate, but it was never proven. He left the job and house and moved away, and we were the next occupants. So me and a group of friends, my ex-boyfriend, my female friend, and the other, a male. We took a night off to visit some abandoned places. Now where I live, there's not many, or they're protected by dogs, and I don't fancy having a leg chewed off. So we all dressed in clothes that we knew we could throw away from mold and other things being in the places. We decided to go to the furthest one away, which was an old abandoned swingers club. We arrived at a petrol station halfway down from the literal mansion, walked down the side of the motorway, finally greeted by a fence and a small brick wall. We all helped each other get over and supported each other's balance getting through the back. Backstory to this club. A few years ago, some idiots set it on fire because they thought it was funny. So upstairs was caved in and everywhere looked like it had been smashed up. We walked through to the main lobby, a massive swimming pool and pretty artwork on the wall you can just about see. We looked around, took photos, and we walked out the front, and this is where the first interaction happened. I looked up and to the front, and I was the one behind everyone. I was taking photos, and someone grabbed my shoulder and yanked it back, but no one was behind me, just big gates. So I was a little freaked, and asked the others if they had felt it, and they all said no. My ex-boyfriend at the time had a bat in his hand, and we walked back in. So we're going to visit the dungeons, but as we walked over, there was a clown mask hanging from a rope. Bear in mind, that was not there when we came in. We would have seen it. So I literally said, if this, I'm out. I started walking towards the entrance. Before we left, one of the boys had collected a teddy and put it in the car. We didn't even drive for more than five minutes, and the radio and lights went mad on the dashboard. It didn't take long for the friend to lob the teddy out of the window. Second building I went to was an old pub. The back was open, so we got in through there. Everything looked like it wasn't touched and they just got up and left. So I took some photos of the bar and them all posing as barmen and women. After we looked around, the two boys wanted to go upstairs, so we said, cool beans. We'll wait in the car and watch you. As we watched them, a tall, dark black figure was walking around behind them. I tried to ring my ex-boyfriend, but it was like trying to get through to someone on a radio. They came back downstairs and I said what I saw and what they said next was chilling to the spine. So all the floors are normal bedrooms, right? With the mattresses all stood up? I said, yeah. He said, you get to the top floor and it's empty with a chair in the middle, a belt and a photo of a young girl sitting on the empty chair, nothing else. Just a belt and a photo of a young girl. For some reason, I agreed to go back in after that, to see for myself. I got to the stairs door and everything in my body froze and I said I didn't want to go. Now you know boys being boys, arguing with me over the fact I was scared or whatever, but this was my body purely refusing to move. So they said all right and took me back to the car. As we were leaving, a pint glass went flying at one of the boys' heads and the toilet door slammed shut when I told you they all ran away, they all ran. Now, fun fact, this place is, was where the highwayman was born and raised. Turns out, I'm somehow related to this guy, but it's highly paranormal in the caves up top. So was he protecting me as a cousin or a distant uncle? I'll never know. I've never considered my childhood home haunted, but I still can't make logical sense of this happening. My friend is the one who actually witnessed the unexplainable in my home. I had a friend over one day. We had just gotten back from an outing and we both needed to use the restroom. My house has two restrooms in it, so we both took one and did our business. These bathrooms are located within close proximity of each other. As I was finishing up, I heard my friend calling my name. I yelled back, 
Saying what? But she just continues to call for me. I can hear her voice fading as she's moving in the direction opposite of where the west room I was in was located. I finished up as quickly as I can so I can see what she wants. When I find her, she tells me that as she was leaving the restroom she was in, she saw someone at the end of the hall. She assumed it was me as I was the only one in the house other than her at the time. The only weird thing is that who she thought was me was wearing red shorts. I didn't own red shorts. She followed this figure to my brother's room and when she looked into his room, no one was there. But the red shorts the figure was wearing was laying on the floor of his room. When she told me this, we got the heck out of there. Ever since that experience, I haven't experienced anything else in my home. So about a week ago, I was volunteering at this local art exhibition that happens every year during September. Nothing major, it's about 20 artists showing their work in this converted barn. I honestly volunteered hoping they'd show some of my work. Anyhow, I was working there with the lady who owned the barn and the surrounding properties, her friend and one other guy. Like I said, this whole show was happening in this big converted barn. However, some areas of the barn were still very noticeably old. They had a kitchen area in this back room where I would basically stand around all day and make tea and wash dishes when I needed to. One of those times I was washing the dishes, I was singing to myself in Portuguese. When I heard from the main part of the barn, someone singing back to me. At that moment, I'm thinking I'm having a nice duet with one of the people working there. But then I stop and think to myself, as I'm about to reach the chorus, I'm working in an art exhibition in England with two 50-year-old women and a 17-year-old guy, all of whom are British. Who the hell speaks Portuguese here? I stop singing and the voice immediately goes quiet. I go out into the big main room to see who's doing this and this is an open space with little to no hiding places. No one is there. I would have heard if they'd left through the door as that thing made a hell of a racket when opened or closed. I think because that was one of the leftover features from before the conversion. Now that I think about it, I can't confidently say whether the person singing was male or female. I still find it pretty creepy a week later. Around 2013 to 16, at around dusk on a late summer day, me and my mom were walking our dogs in the neighborhood. As we turned the corner onto a street leading to a four-way intersection, I noticed a figure walking slowly down the middle of the intersection. As we approach, I immediately feel a sense of dread and anxiety. The person was a teen girl wearing a tie-dyed shirt and short shorts, bawling, walking down the middle of the road. I was perplexed at the time, but now I know it very well could have been a person in crisis. My mom looks in the direction I'm looking, but doesn't seem to see or acknowledge the girl. The nights also seem to darken suddenly for about 10 seconds to almost the conditions of a moonless night as she walked in between me and my sister. As she got closer, I noticed a tissue in one hand and a piece of paper with writing in the other. There was a large amount of blood on her shirt and the tissue and she was covered in either sweat or water. She didn't acknowledge either of us. And when I looked back about 10 seconds after crossing the intersection, the night had returned to dusk and there was no sign of her. Recently, I've been looking into missing persons reports and police records in my town for this time period, and I've come up short of anything but more questions. My mom doesn't recall the event, but she recalls me being especially quiet and going to bed early that night. I do have a history of seeing ghosts. Take that as you will. This story happened to me. On May 22nd, 2022, my wife and I were spending the night at Frank Sinatra's house in Palm Springs. This is the day after our wedding and we had been there since Friday. On Sunday night, I had stayed up late and didn't realize how late it was as I was stargazing by the pool, smoking a joint. I decided to go back to the main bedroom where my wife was asleep. I made sure to walk the property 
locking any open doors and closing any open windows. As I made my way back to go to bed, I walked into the bedroom and checked the time. It was 3.15. I thought, damn, it's late, and closed the door. Turned around and started to take a step towards the bed. The door as I take my second step clicks and opens. Now I know what you're thinking because I thought the same thing. I'm under the influence and there's a small chance that I didn't shut the door. Debunked. So I turn around and close the door again, but this time I push the door and make sure it's closed. And I lock the door. So as I think that's the end of that, I jump into bed, put on cartoons and get ready to knock out when I start to hear knocking on the glass wall and door that goes to the backyard. I think nothing of it and ignore it until I hear a click again and then I watch the door swing open and slam against the doorstop, waking up my wife. We both freaked out and I searched the entire house for any anomalies that could have caused it, but nothing. I went to use the restroom, and as I'm using the restroom, I hear the clicking of a light switch, but nothing is turning on and off. I think nothing of it, and then my wife proceeds to hear the same thing when she uses the restroom. The rest of the night, we're hearing scratches, knocks on windows, and what sounded like walking on the roof. We told the property management company about it, and they had said it's the first time someone reported like this happening. Weird experience. Won't be staying there again by ourselves. I was born in 2003, so I'm 19 now. I don't remember when exactly it happened, but it was certainly between 2007 and 2009, when I was four to six years old. There were days when I would ask questions about the world around me, which is natural for that age. The thing is, I recall at least two events in which I asked a question and suddenly everything around me stopped moving for a very short time, as if time had stopped except for myself. While the time was paralysed, someone would talk to me, answering the questions. I recall on both occasions, the voice who answered me was a soft male voice. Anyone would be scared by that, but the voice was so friendly that hearing it made me feel at peace. After the voice answered my questions, time would return to normal like nothing happened. Eventually, after it happened the second time, it never happened again. I eventually forgot about it until 2019, when for some reason I remembered those events and never forgot again. Also in 2019, around October to December, I was in my grandparents' room staring at the night sky, when my eyes fixated on a cloud for no reason. It was no different from any other cloud, but it made me curious, so I kept staring at it. Suddenly, a blue sphere of light passed through the cloud at an impressive speed. I didn't manage to look too much at it, but I remember that besides the blue colour, it had a bright white core. I'm not sure if this is related to the voice that I used to hear when I was a kid or not. Both my grandparents also had experiences with UFOs when they were younger. For some context on this situation, I live with four roommates, and several days ago at around 2.30 in the morning, it sounded like someone was moving pots and pans around in our kitchen very loudly. At the time, I thought nothing of this as we're all college students, so someone was surely making a meal late at night. I asked all of them in the following days, and no one was out of their rooms or was awake at that time. One other roommate heard this and had the same thought. After this, we searched the whole house and even checked in our attic to see if someone was there. No one was up there, and nothing has occurred since. Besides the gaping hole where one of my roommates fell through the ceiling, he's okay, and it was hilarious. Until I had a very strange occurrence earlier in the day. I'm still pretty creeped out as this happened a little less than an hour ago. I was sitting at my desk just doing some work, and had been there for a couple of hours, not doing much, just in the flow of work and in my own little world. I have a journal with a pen resting next to it that's been stationary for hours. I notice the pen start to move slightly and move back to its original position and think nothing of it. But once I take my eyes off the pen and back to the monitor, it rolls to the middle of my desk and stops in the middle of my mouse pad. This may be a tiny thing that I chalked up to me doing something that caused it to move, 
I was looking for a song on my TV and was completely motionless when this occurred. I proceeded to stare at this pen for a minute or two and I say out loud, roll it back please. I was hoping for something, but unfortunately, nothing occurred. I put the pen back in its original spot and started messing with it, seeing what caused it to move and if something minor could have caused this. I can confidently say that it took some energy to get this pen rolling from the side of my journal. This was not a gust of wind that caused this and was not caused by a banging on the desk or any other type of motion in the room, as there was none. The other very concerning thing about this is that the pen continued to roll down the entirety of my mouse pad until it hit my keyboard, unlike what it did when it first moved where it stopped in the middle of my desk. I've tried rolling this pen repeatedly for the past hour and a half and cannot recreate it without it stopping the pen itself. I know this is pretty minor compared to other people's experiences, but this was enough for me to sage my house and hope for the best. So this just happened today, so it's super fresh. A little long also. A little background, I've had paranormal experiences before that were super scary. It always occurs when I'm half asleep, or even dead asleep at 3am. I've heard whispers in another language, and the next day was the worst day of my life. Maybe I'll tell the bad experiences in another post. So I learned in the past few years that these things are real. First hand experience. Coming to today, I moved to a new country, and ever since I moved to this home, I have weird dreams every day. I don't usually dream much, and I know it's in this home only, because last week I was on vacation in another place, and had zero dreams. But it never felt evil here. It just felt weird. So today, I had a major interview, which I'd been preparing for for a week. I'd set an alarm, and I'm that type of person who needs a single alarm to wake up. My interview was at 11am, alarm was at 9am. I snoozed unfortunately, but once I did that, I was still remembering my preparation and answers for the interview, while resting my eyes when I was half asleep. This is when I feel a distinct someone poking my shoulder from behind to wake me up. Twice. It was like poke, two second gap, poke. My eyes immediately open, and I see I'm laying facing my husband, so the wall is behind me. I could still feel a little pressure on where it poked. I started praying because at first, I thought it's another bad entity like the last couple of times. My heart is exploding and I'm praying, but unlike last time, I felt the vibes were not negative. So I turned around and grabbed my phone to see the time. It was 10.30am and the ghost woke me up for the interview. I just thanked him and told him to please don't help or come in front of me because I'm scared of this stuff 